Good morning, everybody. Welcome to St. Luke's. Are there any visitors? Any visitors? Oh, no, you're not a visitor. Nina Jin. Well, welcome. anyway, I can't see properly, but anyway, but, uh, welcome to St. Luke's uh, this morning. Uh, let's just pray that God will bless our service. Thank you, Lord, for this new day, this wonderful new day that, that you've created. Thank you that your mercies are new every morning, and great is your faithfulness. I'll hand over to Felicity. Uh, so lovely to be here with everyone again. And um, when I was in London, I went to the National Gallery to see a special exhibition of um, St. <laughs> Francis of Assisi. And um, he, if you don't know anything about him, he was uh, made a canonized St. Francis, and he was around at the time of about 1100s. And um, he was a young man who gave up his life with, of wealth and pleasure to live in poverty and, and love for God. And one of the things that he was, that was well known about him is that he uh, <laughs> spoke a lot about the natural world and um, the obligation of care towards fellow human beings and all of creation. And um, the, some of the images were of him preaching to the birds and lots of nature scenes. And Eric will carry on from there. Yeah, so I, I chose this song. Um, the words actually are written by St. Francis, all creatures of our God and King. And the thing that stood out for me about him was that he didn't just see people as praising God, but he saw the birds and the animals and all of nature as praising God in the sounds that they made. Even the whales, if you think about the whales, when they make their sounds, they're actually praising God. So let's just stand in and sing this song. All creatures of our God and King.
in the book of Job, God is depicted as responding to Job's questions by asking him questions such as, where were you when the, I laid the earth's foundation? And who marked off its dimension? Surely you know. Eventually Job shows humility when he states, surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. Thank you, Lord, that when we approach you in humility, you do reveal yourself to us as the king of the universe. Nothing can compare to you. down at your feet, Lord, and we cry, holy.
And so the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus. Sing psalms, hymns, and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. At the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so please sit as we continue to pray. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude and to listen to your word with eagerness through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, you wept over the sins of your city. On our city, nation, and world, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division, jealousy and bitterness. On us, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Grant us peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and call to mind our sins in penitence and faith. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. So we come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. And so we pray together, God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done, and we are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with heartfelt repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy on you, Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch him and say that we love him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Amen. And so as we come to the reading of God's word, we pray, Lord, indeed, that you would open our eyes, our ears, 
and the eyes and ears of our hearts, Lord, and plant in us the seed of your word. Ignite it in our hearts. Ignite it in our lives. Ignite it in our conversations with those we meet. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I take the first reading, I'd just like to apologize in advance if my voice does break. I do have a bit of a flu. A reading from Genesis chapter 37, verses 1 to 4 and 12 to 28. Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the son of Bilal and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age and he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flocks near Shechem and Israel said to Joseph, as you know, your brothers are grazing their flocks near Shechem. Come, I'm going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to him, Go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks, and bring word back to me. Then he sent him off from the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, What are you looking for? He replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? They have moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this cistern here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the honored robe he was wearing. And they took him and threw him into the cistern. The cistern was empty. There was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm, and myrrh. And they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come. Let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. So when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph up out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. <laughs> You might like to sit for the reading of the psalm. And the psalm today is Psalm 105, verses 1 to 6 and 16 to 22, and we'll say it alternately. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Abraham, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He called down famine on the land 
and destroyed all their supplies of food. And he sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. They bruised his feet with shackles. His neck was put in irons till what he foretold came to pass, till the word of the Lord proved him true. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He made him master of his household, ruler over all he possessed, to instruct his princes as he pleased and teach his elders wisdom. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Please will you stand for the reading of the Gospel. Listen to the good news proclaimed in Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Glory to Christ our Savior. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise Christ our Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be God forever. Won't you be seated? I don't know whether it's struck you how similar, in a way, the stories of Joseph and Jesus were. Both had the, um, had the hand of God upon them. Both had prophecies about them. Both had the people close to them being offended at them when it appeared that they might be special. And both had the people around them trying to get rid of them and in some ways being successful. And in Joseph's case, he went off to Egypt and to the, as far as his family were concerned, he was dead. But eventually the family came down to Egypt and it was as if Joseph had been resurrected because there he was, the second most powerful man in Egypt, and the one who could save them from death and open the path of God to them. And we find much the same thing happening with Jesus. And it's a lovely little thing in, in, in the gospel reading that when um, Jesus got into the boat and the wind died down, those in the boat worshipped him. Now, when Joseph was in Egypt, his brothers came and saw him and they bowed down to him in recognition of who he was in Egypt. But the disciples in the boat worshipped Jesus. And there's a huge difference between that bowing down to authority and worshipping somebody. And we need to ask ourselves sometimes, and I need to ask myself, well, then what is worship all about? Is worship the songs we sing on Sunday? And yes, it is. But worship is more than that. Because in a way, the songs that we sing on Sunday are only relevant in our lives if something has been happening during the week. And we come together 
as worshippers who have worshipped for six days to worship together on the seventh day. And our worship here is fueled not so much by the music group who facilitate it, but is fueled by the worship, the way that we've honoured God in the week that we are leaving behind them. And we need to be aware of that because worship is important. Worship should also be natural because the, the disciples worshipped Jesus when they saw what he was about and what he could do and that he must be special. And with heaven-sent insight, they could say, you are the son of God. Of course, they would put their foot in it almost immediately afterwards. But nevertheless, they were beginning to see and beginning to get there. And we have the advantage of hindsight. And worship. And funnily enough, worship is so natural to us in the world. And we say, did you see that innings of A.B. de Villiers? Did you see how gloriously poised he was and how well he did? And if A.B. de Villiers walked in, wow, A.B. And we'd all stand and applaud. Well, you would, because I'd ask you to. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we get all twitchy and embarrassed when we come to worship God. And I was so moved when listening to Felicity because I agree with St. Francis. In the middle of the night, I can hear the crickets. And they go on and on and on. And I have no doubt that this is an ongoing worship of God. It's built into them. It's natural of nature. And worship should be natural of our redeemed nature. But what is worship? And it comes in different forms. And how am I, as a worshiper, called to express it? Well, there's some, some expressions in song which can really get me get going. Uh, and there's one particularly, Jesus. What a beautiful name. And I want to sing that. And I enjoy it. And it's meaningful. Because he's beautiful in my life. Now, of course, there, now I'm getting onto thin ice, aren't I? Because here's a man saying of another man, well, he's beautiful. And some would find that very natural. But for me, it would not become natural to say of another man, he's natural. Wouldn't have much difficulty with some of the women until I got to know <laughs> that side. I mean that. <laughs> but you know what I mean. And it hears the song, what a beautiful name is the name of Jesus. And it goes on and on. And one of the beauties of the choruses is they do go on and on. And some of you hate it. But sometimes it's like peeling an onion. And eventually you get into the heart of it. And because it's an onion, you burst into tears. But this time because it's so beautiful. And what about Jesus how lovely you are. And again, men don't find it easy to say of someone how lovely you are. It might be taken the wrong way. But Jesus is lovely. And lovely is a lovely word. But lovely has lost some of the, the specialness of it over the years. And interesting, when you go back to the Puritans, lovely was a word that they used about God, about Jesus, and they used it in their worship, man to man, so to speak. And then we had the collect, which we said together, open our eyes, Lord, that we may see Jesus. Because worship will always be artificial until we can actually see with our eyes or with our spiritual eyes the wonder, the beauty, the loveliness, the glory, the majesty, the purity, the holiness, the love, the grace of the person we're focusing on. And it doesn't just happen because it's not part of the world in which we live. And sometimes we have to pause and it's that funny word called contemplation or meditation but it's really just thinking about, in this case, Jesus and who he is 
and what he's done. And we don't find it difficult. Well, I don't. I can look at a sunset and be lost for words. I can hear the crested barbwood singing. And he goes on and on. Do you know the longest recorded um, um, uninterrupted crested barbwood song, as far as I know, is 23 seconds, which is not long until you're the little bird with very small lungs. <laughs> but it's beautiful. And when I wake up in the morning and I hear the birds beginning to wake up and to chatter just outside my window, it's lovely. You see, there are things which are lovely, but lovely when we stop and we listen. And sometimes they're words, they're poems, they're songs, they're prose which just stirs something within us. And it stirs within us because we are made that way, made by a God who is like that. A God who is beautiful. A God who has made us in his image. Which means that we can appreciate beauty and loveliness, whether it's in form or whether it's in, in life, in living, in character. So Jesus is lovely in person, says the Puritan. Jesus is a God-man, completely glorious, holy, pure and full of majesty. Pause for a moment and just say, that's Jesus. This is Jesus. He's so special. Listen to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, you almost need to whisper those last words. They are so special. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, life. And he would say later, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am everything that you seek in life. It's in me because I made it. And I made it because I am it. And that glorious name of God which he gives to himself, I am. I am everything. I am all time. I am. And I invite you to be a part of I am. And it happens because I came to you as I am in my son so that I could become I am you. And I could become I am you dead so that I could become I am you alive. And you could become one with me. And that's in Jesus. And I don't like preaching about hell because it's a grim place. And many of you know what it's like because you live it. But until you know there's a hell, you don't understand the glory of the love and the grace of this man called God. And there's a danger that we remember Jesus as we remember jo uh, Joseph, as a man in history. But he's not just a man in history. He died as a man in history. But he rose to glory as the Son of God, and God the Son, who is alive and at the right hand of God now and forevermore, and he's there, and he's interceding. I don't know about you lot, but he's interceding for me and you, individually. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> I'm not unique. <laughs> but he is. He's saying to the father, that's my boy. That's my Jerry. Look after him, Dad. And that's Jane, and that's Jean, and that's Joseph, and... And you know how wide the gate in the, into the kingdom is? It's narrow. 
And it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to walk through. Because you know how wide that gate is? It's just as wide as me. And I can only go through if I leave the warts and the pimples and the baggage behind me. Because that gate is only as wide as Jesus. Because he said, I am the gate. It's that narrow that it's only capable of taking one person at a time. Whereas the road to hell is as wide as creation. Stunning. This is Jesus. He's lovely in his birth and in his own incarnation. Jesus was rich and glorious beyond anything that we could imagine. But for our sakes, he becomes poor. Listen to Paul. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. Wow. He did that for me and for you and for us. He put aside his glory to come and find me and you and us individually. And he calls us by name. Isn't that glorious? We were lost. We were born outside of heaven. We were born outside of the grace of God. But he comes to bring us back if we will have him. And so he's lovely in his birth. Is there anything lovely than, lovelier than the birth of a baby? I've got a great granddaughter. Have I ever told you this? <laughs> she turned one recently. And her first word, we've got it on, on video. No! <laughs> Boy, is she human. <laughs> And God came for her to turn her no into a yes. And that's lovely. And Jesus comes in all that beauty, but in all that dependency. He stooped so far down to become one of us that he could save us. He's lovely in the way that he lived. Jesus always did the right thing, no matter how difficult the circumstances. He lived in poverty. He suffered great persecution, but only ever did good to others. He never the viled, cursed, or responded to evil with evil. And as he hung upon the cross and they drove the nails into him, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And the commentators suggest that such is the tense that that prayer wasn't only said once, but it was an ongoing prayer all the time. Father, forgive them, because they don't know what they're doing. As they stood there and they mocked him, Father, forgive them. As they stood there and they bargained over his clothes, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do, because this is why he came. And so that is his last moments. He's praying for the ones he came to save, but the ones who were killing him. Father, forgive them. This is the Jesus. And as you get caught up in your sin, if you are bogged down in a sin and you can't get rid of it or you're not strong enough and you are so ashamed of yourself and you think he can't possibly love you, hear those words, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And we don't because we don't realize the severity of sin. But he's loving us and he's taking us and he's taking it all the time. And so how lovely in his death. We look upon the cross and think that's vile, and of course it's vile. But it's so lovely because it was the only way that I could be saved. There was no other way. And so Jesus, as, as it was prophesied, prophesied, was whipped for me and was nailed for me and suffered the most vile death imaginable for me. And 
And yet the world says it doesn't matter. But don't be silly. I can't believe in a God who would do that. But for those of us who can believe, because we've tasted hell, it's one of the most beautiful things that one could ever see. That that man is suffering and dying so that I can be healed and cleansed and set free and so that I can become beautiful and so that together, and this is the hard part because I don't know about being joined with you, Lord, <laughs> that we could become the bride of Christ. Now, I want to tell you that I looked at my wife, my, my girlfriend, one evening, and she looked so beautiful. And it was 13 days after we first went out, and man, I thought she looked magnificent. And I asked her to marry me. And I've known some of you for a long time, and I'm not going to ask <laughs> That Jesus wants us at his, as his bride. And what he's doing is he's taking us in a strange journey through ugliness into beauty. And a beauty is, that is so profound because it's tasted the ugliness. And in a paradox has become more beautiful than if it hadn't. And I don't understand that, but something within me says, yes, now I do. And so he's creating us with a beauty which is more beautiful because of what's happened. This is Jesus. And Jesus is lovely in his glory. One of his last prayers is saying to the Father, give me back the glory I had with you before the beginning of the world. And that just reminds us that the Jesus we know is only half the story because there is a glory to Jesus we haven't even begun to appreciate the glory of the Holy One before it all began. And this is the Jesus who loves us, the Jesus who is filled with grace, the Jesus who gives us his righteousness, the Jesus who God uses to adopt us as his children, as joint heirs with Christ. The Jesus who makes it possible for us to become part of a God's eternal light and life and love and not eternal darkness. Don't you think he's worth worshipping? But I feel so embarrassed. Well, he must have been quite embarrassed naked on the cross. Not with that funny little white cloth. That wasn't there. Naked. I think you can put up with a bit of embarrassment. I've told you the story before, but one of the loveliest moments at St. Luke's was I was standing at the back, and the service was going on, and there was a man standing just off the aisle. He was one of our older men. He was a uh, well-respected um, lawyer in town, uh, he's no longer alive, so you don't need to look at the lawyers here. <laughs> and the worship was going, and I watched him, and he was beginning to fidget. And I thought, that's strange. And I watched, and he was singing, and he began to fidget. And, and then uh, I watched more, and he still fidgeted. And suddenly he went like this. And the top of his head blushed. <laughs> It was such a privileged moment because I knew that for the first time maybe something was happening inside him and the only way he could give expression to it was to lift his hands in praise. But he was embarrassed and the top of his head blushed. 
And I'll never tell you who it was because that was just my privilege to be a part of that moment and to understand it and to love it, to love the gentle, tender grace of God. And embarrassment is really, it's all in us, not in others. Let's stop there. This is Jesus. And all I can do is try and be a part of the answer to the song. Open my eyes, Lord. I want to see Jesus. To reach out and touch him. And say that I love him. And to say it with words. And to try and say it with the way I live, to mother and to mother and to mother. And when things get tough, just say, no, it's okay. Even if people don't understand, even if people mock and belittle, it's okay. Because my Jesus loves me. And as best I can, I love him. And it's in him that I find my identity of who I am. An identity which is beyond gender. An identity which is beyond sex. An identity which is beyond the expressions of the world. It's an identity of me and him and us. And I love him. Because he loves me. And it's so special. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you said... that you and the Father would come to make our home, your, your home with us and would reveal yourself to us. By your Spirit, Lord, reveal, to, reveal yourself to us today. Touch our spirits with your love, your reality, your grace, your presence, that we might be still and know that you are God and it's good and it's okay forever and ever. Amen. We continue in uh, prayer. Lord, thank you for this uh, glorious and uh, warm autumn day. Thank you, Lord, for the words spoken to us through Jerry this morning, reminding us of your eternal and unconditional love for us. Thank you, Father, that in a broken world and fallen humanity, you are our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in times of trouble. Forgive us, Lord, for the brokenness we see around us through our own sin. We lay this brokenness before you, asking you, Lord, to heal it, and asking you to be the potter and us the clay, and praying, Lord, that you would mold us and make us according to your plan and purpose for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we are humbled to know that your thoughts are higher than our thoughts, that your ways are not our ways. Help us, therefore, Lord, in our limited understanding of you, 
to discern your voice and to find our identity in you. Forgive us when we, like Peter, have doubt and are overwhelmed. Ignite our faith and help us to walk boldly in your light, trusting in your way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This week, we pray especially for Bethany Home, a home that provides shelter for vulnerable women who are homeless and have had to flee from abusive environments with their children. Comfort and strengthen them, Lord, and bless those who care and support for them at Bethany Home. Help us also to discern ways in which we can lend a hand and support in homes similar to Bethany and any other environments where we live. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for the government and its leaders. We pray that they may lead selflessly and with integrity. We pray for respect for the law and for order, both from citizens and our leaders. We pray that all role players in society may act blamelessly and tirelessly for a just and equal society. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the youth of our country, recognizing the high unemployment levels, which affects the youth mostly. We pray that you would galvanize those in government, educators and non-governmental agencies that deal with the youth to act with a sense of urgency and to find a workable plan to prepare the youth to become future leaders in a challenging world. And as matriculants prepare for their preliminary exams, we pray that you would help them to remain calm, to focus, and we pray for discipline throughout this process. In your mercy, Lord. Father, we pray for the church throughout the world as millions gather this Sunday to honor and praise you. We remember those who are not able to practice their faith openly because of persecution. We ask for protection and for strengthening of their faith. And we thank you, Lord, for St. Luke's, for the diocese, and for all the provision, Lord, upon the church. We pray especially for Ian and Bernice who have taken time off to rest. Restore them so that they may return renewed and ready to serve you afresh. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for world peace and we lift the innocent people in war-torn countries who have lost loved ones and who have been displaced. We pray for people in Turkey, in Ukraine, in Syria, and other lesser known afflicted areas. May they find hope in you, soften the hearts of the leaders who perpetuate the wars that they may turn their face towards you for peace sake. Lord, in your mercy. And here at St. Luke's, we, had, we thank you for everyone present here today, physically and online. We thank you for the lives of those who enjoy good health. We thank you too for the lives of those who are battling ill health. And we pray, Lord, for your healing hand upon them. Comfort and strengthen their care leaders too. Lord, in your mercy, And as we begin a new week, may your Holy Spirit, which lives in us and through which we live and move and have our being, be our guiding compass this week. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen.
Thank you, Mondo. Why don't you stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I'm going to invite you to have a seat and... I'm going to invite Mklantla and Kushu Msibi to come forward. <coughs> come and stand on either side of me. There we go, facing each other. There we go, but facing the congregation too, so they can also see. There we are. The reason... <coughs> why we have such splendidly <coughs> dressed people with us today is because it is a celebration of this couple's wedding anniversary. The celebration is yesterday, but let us begin with congratulating them, shall we? Yeah? As a part of that celebration, they have asked that we bless their wedding rings. And I'm going to do that. And following that, I will also say a prayer for the couple, holding my cell phone because the blessing I've prepared is on it. So give me a second. There we go. Right. Do you have the rings with you? Do you want to hold them? There, perfect. Okay. So, yes, that's a good idea. Let's open them. Okay, you're welcome to come up. There we are. Okay. So, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, who created each of us to love and to be loved by you and by others, we pray your heavenly blessing on these rings, which Kushu and Nklantla will wear. May your divine and constant love encircle their hearts as these rings encircle their fingers. May these rings be symbols of their commitment and love for each other in God. May these rings forever shine as a testament to your ever-present help through all seasons of life. We pray this in the name of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so let's pray for the couple. And because we're praying as a community, why don't you come to the side so the community can also see. And I'm going to ask you all to stretch out your hands so that we can pray together. Lord, we thank you for Kushu and Mkhlantla. We thank you, Lord, for their love for each other. We pray, Lord, that for each, 
Each would help the other to recognize God in all that happens around them as they move forward through life together. We pray, Lord, that when it feels as though they're stepping out of the boat as Peter did and falling, when they see the wind and it causes fear in their hearts, that you would help the other to be as Christ, to take their hand and point them towards you in the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Yes, of course. <laughs> going to put the rings onto each other's fingers. They are beautiful rings. I'm commentating for those who don't have the wonderful view that I do. Ouch. <laughs> And so, let us share the peace as a community. Won't you stand? Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you.
As we come to the presentation of the gifts, a reminder that as per Mondo's prayers, um, we hold Bethany home in our prayers this week, and that is where our collection is going to go to as well. Source of all life, the heaven and earth are yours. Yet you've given us dominion over all things. Receive the fruits of our labor offered in love. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us, it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy to give you thanks, Holy Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, you have created us in your image. Through him, you have freed us from sin and death. Through him, you have made us your own people by the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so we join the angels and saints in proclaiming your glory as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Father. Through Christ, your Son, our Lord, and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Father, proclaiming his saving death and resurrection and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise, and grant that we who eat this bread and drink this cup may be renewed by your spirit and grow into his likeness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom 
All honor and glory be yours. Father, we worship you in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Won't you be seated as we say together the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We, who are many, are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord the glory of God the Father. Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And I ask you to be led by the ashes as you come up.
the table of the king. And so with thankfulness and faith we rise to respond and to Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His mercy endures forever. Creator God, you give seed for us to sow and bread for us to eat. Make us thankful for what we have received and generous in supplying the needs of others so that all the world may give you thanks and glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Please remain seated as we prayerfully sing in Corsi Sikilela, Africa. Corsi Sikilela, Africa, Malu Paka Miso Pondo Wayo, Nizvai Mitana Soye. to the notices. I'm not aware that there are any notices. I want to come to birthdays, but before I do that, are there any notices that I don't know about that anyone would like to give? No. Okay. Does anyone have a birthday today or in this coming week? If you do, or if you're shy, the person next to you has to nudge you. There we go. We have one person. Yay. Great. There is also someone who was not with us today, whose birth, well, sorry, I think it's tomorrow that the birthday is, yeah. Patience Muringani. Um, and this is a happy sad. I'm going to ask you to stand again in a moment, sorry. F feel free to take a seat, but just now we're going to sing happy birthday, okay. Um, Shane, Patience can't be with us today because um, her cousin was killed in a car accident and she's devastated. So as we sing her happy birthday, we rejoice in life, but we also hold her and her family in our prayers. Okay. May I ask you to stand? Can we sing? all standing, we continue with the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. The Lord Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard you, save you, and bring you to that heavenly city where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessing, honor, and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. So, we all very privileged to be members of the kingdom. But I think that we need to try and spread the kingdom, try and invite people into the kingdom. So during this week that's coming ahead, may we invite people to join us in the wonderful kingdom that we enjoy, the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. 